Today we're going to be learning Moed Katan Daf Gimel. This is the Daf for Shabbat. Today's Daf is sponsored by Adam Plunka in loving memory of his grandfather, Harry Reuben Plunka, Yerach Me'el Herschel Ben Yisrael, father of Stanley Plunka. Today's Daf is also sponsored by Elerica Kolach in loving memory of her father, Richard Gluby, Hill Ben Yosef Kaman on his 25th year at site. Learning the Daf exemplifies my father's maxim. Always try something new that interests you. It may lead to a lifelong love. Today's stuff is sponsored by Terry Kravosha and Rabbi Chaim Herring, in loving memory of Terry's father, Judge Norman Kravosha, Nachum Mayor Ben Malka and David on his first yurt site. Our dad was a lifelong learner and jurist who loved nothing better than a well-reasoned argument. Okay, we will get started now with our daf. So what we saw in yesterday's daf was this, uh, the mission. In the beginning of the mission, we said, Mashkin Beit HaShlachim B'Moed Ubashvi'it. You're allowed to water a field that needs irrigation, both on Cholomoed and in the Shemitah year, to which the Gemara asked at the bottom of yesterday's daf, which was, I understand on Cholomoed, because Davar HaAved, if you don't water your field, your whole field is going to get ruined. But what about in the Shemitah year? I don't understand Shemitah. Ah, and also because we say, Mishum Tirchahu, right? And Bukham Seid Asharu Rabbana. The whole reason we don't want to allow you to do it on Moed is just because we don't want you to do hard labor. But when it's a, when it's a financial loss, we'll permit this. But Ela Shvi'it, but when it comes to Shvi'it, Ben Lamanda Amar Mishum Zorea, U Ben Lamanda Amar Mishum Choresh, whether you say watering is because of Zorea, is because of planting, or watering is because of plowing, either which way is Ri'a Bechari Shabbat Shvi'it Mishari. We don't allow planting and we don't allow plowing. So watering should be forbidden just as well. So Amar Abai, we had two answers. One is, B'Shvi'it B'Zman Azeh, the Rebihi. Right. Abai said, this is all according to Rebbe, who holds, Shemitah is only midirabbanan. Once it's dirabbanan already, we can be lenient. Right. The whole issue is, if it's Torah law and it's forbidden, how can we permit it because of a loss? But if it's rabbinic, then of course it's okay. So he says, ah, let's say we hold like Rebbe, our Mishnah holds like Rebbe, that it's only rabbinic in our times. But Rabba says, starting from the second to last line on yesterday's daf, Rava Amara Filu Tema Rabanan Avot Asarachmana Tola Dolo Asarachmana. We could say that even if you hold by the rabbis, who hold that Shemitah is still by Torah law even nowadays. But what do you say? There's a difference between Avot, the main categories, and the subcategories. So how does this work? Why is this? Right? We have categories and subcategories. We have it in, in Malachot on Shabbat. And we have it there, if you remember, subcategories are forbidden by Torah law. And we have it by Avot Nizikin, we're going to get to in Baba Kama, where we have main categories, Arba Avot Nizikin, and then within them there's subcategories. So here we're going to say also, there's main categories and there's subcategories. And the subcategories, okay, right, so for example, like watering, it's going to be a subcategory, and even if it's a subcategory of Harisha, Right? And let's say, right, so then the whole question is Harisha, forbidden by Torah law or not, but the main thing is Tola Dot, these subcategories are not forbidden by rabbinic law. By, I'm sorry, by Torah law. They're only forbidden by rabbinic law because they're forbidden by rabbinic law. Basically, we can say, ah, well, then the rabbis permitted it for financial loss. How do we know that Tola Dot lo asa rachmana dichtif? Uba shana shvi'id shabbat shabbaton yela aretz. Sad chalot It says in the seventh year, it should be a day of rest for, a year of rest for your land. Don't plant your fields, okay? The continuation is, kar mechalot Don't prune your, your um, vine, your vineyards. And then it says, etzviach kitzir chalot things that grow, don't cut. Ve'et in venzir nizir chalot and don't cut any of the grapes. So basically, we have a bunch of repetition here, right? So now we're going to see this. We have the main categories are planting and cutting, right? Harvesting. But zmira is basically pruning is a subcategory of planting. And bitzira is basically the same thing as ktsira, but for the vineyard. It's the word used to cut in a vineyard. So basically, if these are basically subcategories of the other or can be learned out directly, then why bother mentioning them? To which they say, It's to teach you that specifically these toledo you're liable for, but not for any others. Okay, 
So then we're going to basically say that you're not obligated for watering because it's a tolada, and then you don't have to worry about it. So now they say, okay. So that sounds like a good answer. That's Rava. But now we have a question. Velo, wait a minute. Vaha Tanya, sadchalot is Rava, karmachalot is mo. Eli ella zeru avizimu. What we're going to have now is a long bright head. It's going to basically be split into four parts. The first three parts are going to include all sorts of other activities, things to do in the, in the ground, that are forbidden, okay, in your vine or a vineyard or in your field, that are forbidden also, when we learn it out from the Torah, even though they're only toledot. The fourth category is going to be where we draw the line and where we say, well, we don't go this far. And these are actually permitted. Okay, we're going to, have to show some pictures for this. So I'll pull up pictures right now. These are pictures, right? We're going to use these pictures throughout. Okay, they're from the, the Morot Hadafayomi and they're on the portal Hadafayomi. So thank you for letting us use them. Um, okay, here goes the bright. So that includes only planting and pruning. What about weeding? Okay, idul, according to Rashi, okay, again, sometimes these are subject to different definitions, is what we see in this picture, picture number 13, where you're digging around the vine. Okay, you dig a little hole. And that's basically to get the ground, you know, you hoe, basically, to get the ground to be in better shape. Ule kisuach. Kisuach is, the next picture, is cutting the weeds. Rather than pulling out the weeds, which was nikush, this is cutting the weeds. Talmud Lomar said, how do we know that those are included? Because it says, sadchalo karmachalo. Now notice, it doesn't say, lotiz more karmachalo, lotiz, lotiz ra, in your sadeh and lo tivzor in your kerem, but it says or lo tizmor the kerem. It says karmacha lo tizmor sadcha lo. I'm sorry, karmacha sadcha lo tizra right tizra karmacha lo tizmor because it says it in that order, right? Your field don't, your vineyard don't. They learn from here lo komalacha shebe sadcha. You can't do any malach in your field. You can't do any work in your vineyard. Minai. Okay, so that's the first section. So we learn Nikush, Idor, and Kisuach are all Toledot. They're included, and they're included on a Torah level because we're learning it out from words in the verse. Likewise with the next two categories. Minai and She'em Mekarsimim. That you can't do pruning. Ve'en Mizaldin. You can't trim dry branches. Ve'en Mifazgin Be'ilan. Okay, which is either you can't cut large branches or according to the picture here, they show it a little bit differently, that you have a tree that's leaning over and you basically put something to make the tree go straight up. How do we know you can't do any of those things? Again, Talmud Lomar said, lo lo karmacha lo. Lo komalacha sheba sadcha, ve lo komalacha sheba karmacha. Not any work that's done in those. Minayin she'em mezablim, ve'em mefarkin, ve'em ma'abkin, ve'em ma'ashnim. Okay, let's go through all these things. Mizablim is fertilizer. You can't use fertilizer to put it around the tree. Ein mifarkin. You can't remove stones that are on top of the roots of the tree. Ein ma'avkin, which is if the roots are revealed. Okay, I'm looking at picture 18. If the roots are revealed, you can't put dust on top of them. And minayin ein ma'ashnin. You can't fumigate the tree. Right here, by smoke, you're trying to get rid of worms in the tree. I had this with a tree once. Now it's all blackened because of the smoke that we use. But it's a type of way of dealing with worms and trees. So, how do we know all these things? Talmud Lomar, Sadchalo, Karmachalo, Komalachashu B'Sadchalo, V'Komalachashu B'Karmachalo. You can't do any work in your in your uh, fields at all or not in your vineyards. So now, again, we could have stopped here. And there we're left with our question, which is, if we're going to say Toledot, only the toledot of lotifzol and lotizmol, not to prune, right, and not to cut your grapes. That, and only those are forbidden by Torah law, not any other toledot. What about all these that we just included? Okay, but in any case, we quoted the brightest. We're going to quote the entire bright, even though we don't really need the rest of this, which is, where do you draw the line? Yecholo yekashkesh tachad azetim, which is a light kind of hoeing under the olives, olive tree, velo ya'ader tachad akfanim. You can't do a light hoeing Underneath the tr- the the, vin- the vine, v'lo yimalei nekaim ma'im. You might have thought you can't fill holes with water, or lo yase ugiot lagfanim, or don't make these little circular ditches around the vine the vines so that the water will collect. 
You might have thought all those are forbidden, but Talmud Lomar said, Chalo Tizra, Zri'ah. Okay, now they're going to tell you. It says, said, Chalo Tizra. Now, Zri'ah bichlal haita. Right? Zri'ah was included in Shabbat Shabbaton, don't work the land. Zri'ah is obviously included in don't work the land. The Lama Yatzta, so why is it taken out of the Klal? Meaning, why is it specified specifically that work? To teach you, La Kishalel, Omar Lachan, I'll already tell you this line, people struggle with how exactly to understand this, it's not so clear. Lomar lecha ma zri'a miyuchedet, avodah shebesadeh vishabakerem. Zri'a planting is something you do both in the fields and in the vineyards. Av koshu avodah shebesadeh vishabakerem. Anything that's also in the fields and also in the vineyards is what's included, but not things that are only in one. And somehow what they're trying to say, and this is the tricky part, that that list at the end of things that you can't do this hoeing under the olives or idor under the, the hoeing under the kfanim, those are two different types of hoeing, and what's done is one isn't done in the other. And about these mayim, the water that you do is only what you would do under vines, and you wouldn't do it in a field, these holes. So these are things that are not done in both, and therefore they wouldn't be included. Okay. Either which way, we still have our question, which is, this seems to indicate tola dota forbidden by Torah law. Now remember, when you learn something out by a drasha, by a, 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 an extrapolation in the pasuk, Right, so the pasuk says sadchalo, karmachalo. Does that mean that that's what the Torah meant, or is that the rabbis connecting their halachot to verses in the pasukim and trying to derive it from there? So very often, this is our answer we give when we have a question like this: midirabanan across machtaba alma. This is really forbidden by rabbinic law only. The rabbis connect it to a verse, but it doesn't mean that this verse is Torah. That what we're learning from this verse is Torah law. So, yes, all these Tola Dota are forbidden, but they're only forbidden by rabbinic law, and that resolves our question from the beginning. Okay, now we're going to have another question. And this is just a direct question on one thing listed in this bright. If we're going to assume that the, uh, the uh, sorry, this is on the very end of the bright. We said that you can be Likashkesh. So now the Gemara says, Bikish Kush Bashvi'it Nishare. That was the one in the very last category. One of the things was to hoe under the olives. You could do that. It seems perfectly fine according to this. So now they say, really? But it says, right? Doesn't it say in the verse? So the question is, why did they add what do we learn from each one? You should rest, right? It should be stop doing things. You shouldn't do kishkush. That already is our contradiction. And you should abandon it, meaning you shouldn't take out stones from the land, right? To make it grow better by removing stones. So basically, it seems to say kishkush is a problem. Didn't we just say kishkush is allowed? To which the Gemara answers, this is a very side question, because it's really talking about the part of the Brita that we didn't even really need to be quoting for our purposes. So we're getting off topic, which is something we're going to do a lot today. Um, so now the answer is, there's two different types of kishkush, and those are the ones mentioned in each of these sources. If it's for the health of the tree, it's forbidden, because that helps the tree to grow better. If it's to close up cracks, then it's allowed. So, but to close up the cracks, that's allowed, because that's basically preventing it from being damaged, as opposed to trying to strengthen it to make it grow better. Itmar. Now we're going to have a machloga tanaim, and soon we're going to get back from here to something we just said previously. And we're going to quote the exact whole brighter that we quoted with the exact same kind of question we had from before. Hachoresh b'shvi'it, Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Elazar. So we have a machloket about someone who plows in the Shemitah year. Notice it wasn't mentioned in the pasuk there about choresh. So Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Elazar, chadamar lokeh, v'chadamar no lokeh. One says you get lashes, forbidden by Torah law. The other says you don't get lashes for it. So the question is, why don't you get lashes? Or what's the machlok get about? Why do they have a debate? So lema, why don't we suggest, and we, always when they say lema, we're going to suggest, we usually reject it. So they're going to suggest something. Maybe they're arguing about whether they agree with the particular statement that Rabbi Avin said in the name of Rabbi Eli. Which was? Before we even start, let me explain some background. There's something called a the Yudgimu Mido Chatoran Idrashat Bahem, which is 13 ways that we do drashot on the Torah. Okay, where there's 13 ways where we could say, oh, if you have this kind of type of style in the Torah, you can learn in this way. So one of them is called a Klal Upratu Klal. That means there's a generalization, 
then there's something specific, and then there's a generalization again. And if you have that form, klal, prat, klal, then we learn that everything that's similar to the prat is going to be included as well. Because it started with general and ended with general, we're going to include more things than just the specifics. So we're going to say whatever's like the specifics will be included. So here's our example. Okay? If you look in Rashi, koma kom shnemar klal ba'aseh uprapa say, which is the words we're going to see in a minute, we're going to see that here in our Gemara, in our topic, in the Torah, we have a klal upratu klal. It says, Ubashana shvi'it shabbat shabbaton yela aretz. I'm reading in that Rashi. Okay, it's about 12 lines from the bottom of the page in Rashi. In the seventh year, it will be a Shabbat Shabbaton for the land. Okay, that's a klal. It's general. The land needs to rest. It's also in the, in the formulation of a positive commandment. Shabbat Shabbaton is a day of rest or year of rest rather than saying don't do something. Okay, then we're going to have Sadchalot Yisrava Karmachalot Yismol. That's very specific. Don't plant and don't prune. And that, those are your specifics. And notice it's worded in the negative formulation. Don't do this, don't do that. The next verse is quoted in the next Rashi. It's actually quoted a little bit incorrectly. It should say, Shnat Shabbaton Aretz. A year of rest should be for the land. Again, it goes back to generalization. So we have general, specific general, and general positive, general positive, and the middle is negative, a low tassel. So now here comes Rabbi Avin Barabi Ilan. He says, if you have a generalization, which is a positive commandment, and then you have a specific, which is a negative commandment, and, and then it doesn't really matter what the general is after that. In our case, it goes back to positive. Rules of general don't apply because you're switching topics in the middle. You're moving from positive commandments to negative commandments. So we don't go by general rules here. So now, Manda Amar Loke, if you say you get lashes, lately to Rabbi Avin Amar Rabbi Lai, you don't hold by him because you say, Klal Pratu Klal, it says you can't plant. What's like planting? Plowing is like planting. So we're going to include plowing as well. Therefore, it's included by Torah law. If you say, Manda Amar Eino Loke, Ile to Rabbi Avin, if you say, we hold like Rabbi Avin, then you're going to say, there is no Klal Pratu Klal here. The rules don't apply. That means it's only Zriya and Zmira, and it's not going to include plowing, which means plowing is not forbidden by Torah law. Okay? So now, Gemara says, look, that's not what the Machloket is about. Nobody holds by him. Klalu Pratu Klal, this is a regular Klalu Pratu Klal, which theoretically should include Harisha. So why plowing? So why are you not liable for lashes? Manda amal loke shapir. Makes obvious sense, then you're going to get lashes because it's included. Umanda amal no loke. He would, right, the one who says you don't get lashes, amar lacha, he would say to you, Michtiz nira bichlal zriyahu, bitsira bichlal ktsira. Now we're going to go back to exactly what we said earlier, where we said, we already know that zmira is included as part of zriyah. It's kind of one and the same. It helps it to grow better. And we know that, um, and we know that b'sira b'chlal k'sira, right? And that that's the same thing. So l'may hilchita katvinu rachmana. So for what purpose did we write this? L'may mar da'ahani toladot to do mechayev a toladach rina lo mechayev. This is all to tell you that for those toladot you're going to be chayav, but for the other ones you're not going to be chayav. And that's why it's there to tell you only those toladot not harisha. And that's why he thinks it's not. So now we're going to explain. So exactly what we said before. Harisha is not included because it's not included because, very simply, it is a tolada that's not mentioned in the verse. So that's why the person who says, no look at. So now we see, by the way, that what we said before, what Rav has suggested is his answer. The toladot are not included unless they're written in the Torah. They're only rabbinic. And then the whole Mishnah of Mashkim Be'er HaShlachim would be, work perfectly according to all opinions. That's not actually everyone's opinion, though, because... Some people think that Harisha is included in Torah law, and some people think it's some people think it's not. Think, some people think it's not. Now the Gemara is going to ask the exact same question that we asked before, and just to repeat so it's going to be a little easy to go through this section, which is below. Really, Toledot are not forbidden by Torah law, but what about this Brayta that included all of these Toledot subcategories? We'll go through this a little quickly because we already read it. We only have planting and pruning. Right? To get rid of the 
the weeds and to, right, to cut the weeds or to pull them out entirely. Actually, kishkush is mentioned here. Sorry. This is the kishkush that we had before. That we said um, there's two types of kishkush, right? This is hoeing. Okay, so, um, and kisuach, to, uh, cutting the weeds. Therefore, it includes any work you do in the fields. Right, you don't cut the, um, right, the makarsami. Actually, we didn't have this word makarsami. Oh, well, no, we did. Right, this is also a type of pruning. And mizaridim, which was taking out the dry twigs. And the mefaskin, which we had some different interpretations. Talmud Lomar said, Chalo, Karma Chalo, Komala Chashab said, Chalo, Komala Chashab Karma Chalo. Minayin she'em a zablin, you don't fertilize. Ve'em a farkin, ve'em a ashnim bi'ilan. Here they skip one of them. They skip the, um, e'em a abkin, the dust. Okay? But how do you know you can't fertilize? You can't take away the stones. You can't fumigate the tree. Az Talmud Lomar said, Chalo, Karma Chalo, Komala Chashab said, Chalo, Komala Chashab Karma Chalo. They were the three categories of all things you can't do. You might think you can't hoe lightly underneath the olive tree. You can't hoe lightly under the, the, the vines. You can't fill up these holes with water. You can't make these holes to collect water for the vines. Remember, Zri'a was part of the, the general, not Shabbaton. Then, Lama Yatsa, Lama Yatsa, why was it mentioned specifically? Right, so again, we have, that is going to say only things that are both in the Kerem and in the fields, and that's going to exclude that last category of items. But in any case, all those other categories are included by Torah law, to which the Gemara answers, It's really rabbinic. The rabbis just connected it to verses. That was the whole first part of today's daf, which will connect a little bit to the next section, and then we're going to get off on a total tangent. So again, we started with, just to review, we started with our Mishnah. Mashkin Beit HaShlachin, Bashvi'it, right, um, Bamo'ed and Bashvi'it. Mo'ed, we understood. What about Shvi'it? Right, Mo'ed is only, right, it's rabbinic, so, and because of Tircha, and because of Hefse, because of the financial loss, we're going to permit it. Then we moved on to say, well, what about Shemitah? We gave two answers. Abai, who said it's only those who hold Shemitah's to Rabbanan. Rabba said, even if you hold Shemitah's to Oraita, still it's an issue. And why is that? Because still it's going to be okay, sorry. It's because all Toledot that are not mentioned specifically in the Torah, like Harisha and like watering, are basically not forbidden. Okay? And that's why not forbidden by Torah law. They're only rabbinic. And then we had some questions on that. And, you know, like, what about the Brayta? And then we resolved it by saying, oh, no, the Brayta is only rabbinic. And that's our basic answer. So now we're going to have Ravdimi. Ravdimi is one of these people who used to go back and forth from Babylonia to Israel, or really from Israel to Babylonia. So Ki'ata Ravdimi, when Ravdimi came from, from Israel to Babylonia, he said the following statement. Yachol, you might have thought, Yelkela Tosefet. You get lashes for Tosefet, for adding on. But the, but the rabbis, or the, the Talmud, which really means just the rabbis of that time, exempted. Now, Rav Dimi made this statement that they, they have no idea. They don't know. Is it? What is Yakol Yakala Tosefet? And the Talmud is Lif Torah. What was the exemption and what was the addition? We don't understand anything in the statement. So we're going to have two. Ex- explanations. Rabbi Elazar Amal Harisha. The Tosefet is they added Harisha. Okay, Yochol, again, now let's try to fill it in. You might have thought you'll get lashes for Harisha, for plowing, which is exactly what we were discussing before, and which is why we brought this up. Vahachikamar. This is what he meant to say, or what Rav Dimi was saying. Yachol Yokel Harisha Da'ati Mikalu Pratukal. You can learn it from a Kalu Pratukal. Remember? But the rabbi said, even though we don't hold that, it's a different kind of kalu pratukal, and it doesn't work because it's a say and lo tase, positive and negative. No, we, we rejected that. So theoretically, it should be learned out from a kalu pratukal. But what's the talmud alif Torah? What limud, what drasha 
do we have to exempt? What type of learning statement? To imkain. Kolhane pratalamali. What do you need zmira and bitsira for? If not to say, only zmira and bitsira are forbidden, but no other toladot are forbidden by Torah law, which then exempts you from harisha. You're not going to get lashes for it. Again, it's forbidden, but you won't get lashes because lashes is only for things that are forbidden by Torah law. So that is one way of explaining Rav Dimi, and that's on topic. But Rabbi Yochanan is going to say that this actually means something totally different. And then, for this, we're going to get off on a total tangent that we're not even going to finish fully through today's stuff. Um, we're going to, and it's going to go on to tomorrow's. Rabbi Yochanan Amal, what's Tosefet here? It's not what we were saying, add on another forbidden malacha. It's yamim shosifu chachamim lefnei Rosh Hashanah. It's what we call Tosefet Shvi'it. This is like on Shabbat. We start Shabbat earlier than really sundown, and we end it later than when the sun's when the sun is fully setting. We add on extra time. Likewise, we add on extra time to Yom Kippur as well. Okay, there's Tosefet Yom Kippur. We've learned this before through other Masechta that we've seen. Now we have something called Tosefet Shvi'it, which is you have to also add on to the Shemitah year. So now we're going to read this line of Rav Dimi saying, Yachol Yokel HaTosefet. You might have thought you get lashes on it, but no, Nasev LaTalmuda Liftora. But the drasha came and exempted us. So now let's understand. So, Hachi Kamar, this is what it says. Yachol, this is what Rav Dimi was saying. Yachol Yokel, by the way, point out, Rav Dimi is explaining something he brought from Israel. And the two rabbis that are explaining the statement are both rabbis from Israel, Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Yochanan. So now we're going to say, the whole idea of Tosefet Rosh Hashanah, uh, Tosefet really Shvi'i, that you add on to Rosh Hashanah, meaning you don't just start Shemitah Rosh Hashanah. You start beforehand. We'll see soon how much beforehand. You might have thought you'll get lashes for it. Why did you think that? Because it's learned out from the strange verse, Why do I call this a strange verse? It's different many, there's a bunch of different ways to how to understand this verse. This verse is in Shemot Perak Lamedalid 34, verse 21. And it says, <speaking in Hebrew> Which sounds like it's talking about Shabbat. Six days you work and on the seventh day you rest. <speaking in Hebrew> you should rest from doing Harisha and Ketzira. Which are two of the works you do in the field. Now, many people struggle with this verse because we already know that all these other... Right, all, first of all, why mention just those two? There's 39 malachot that are forbidden. And we know from other places what it is, although it doesn't say explicitly in the Torah, but it says, so why should we specifically talk about these? So we say it must be talking about Shemitah. The question is, you don't need this to talk about Shemitah because we already know. We already learned all this forbidden work. So if it's not talking about Shemitah and those Melachot, it must be coming to say, you also can't do Harishan Ketzira, before the Shemitah year, there we have Tosefet. So you might have thought, since we learned it out from a verse in the Torah, that you'll get lashes for it. But the rabbi said you're exempt. For what reason? As we're going to see right now. So now we're going to go off on a tangent to basically explain the second reading of Rav Dimi that has nothing to do with Shemitah and what we were learning about whether it's forbidden to plow. It actually has to do with or toladot are, are forbidden, are forbidden by Torah law, but it's coming to teach you about the Tosefet Shvi'it, and you might have thought it was forbidden by Torah law and you would get lashes. Well, you don't. So now, why don't you? And what's the story here? So let's learn. Mayamim Shalafne Rosh Hashanah. So, first of all, when does this Tosefet Shvi'it start? Kiditznan, as it says in the Mishnah, uh, we're going to distinguish between a field with trees and a field with Wheat, okay, uh, your things growing in the ground. My ad matai choshim b'stei ilan erev shviit. Until when can you plow a field with trees in it on the before the shmita year? Beit shamay omrim kozman sheyafel apri. If it's still you're serving the fruits that are already grown on the tree from the from that year, you can still do it. You can plow, but if it's already serving the tree for growing new fruits for the upcoming year, then already you can't do it because that's serving next year, even though the Shemitah year hasn't started. That's Tosefet. Ubeit Hillel omrim ad ha'atzeret. Beit Hillel says, until um, Shavuot, okay? Which means, right, many months before, okay? 
וקרובים דברי אלו להיות כדברי אלו. And by the way, we don't really know כל זמן שיפה לפרי, but comes the, the brighter and tells us, the Mishnah, and tells us he means very close to Shavuot as well. Now, this is not a big machlok at Bet Shammai Bet Hillel. They're basically talking about a very similar time. Ve'am matai choshim stay alavan. Erev shvit, stay alavan is a wheat field. Till when can you plow a wheat field? Mishit tichle alecha, when the rains stop. Ve'chosh b'nei adam choshim litam mikshaot umidlao. And any time that people plow in order to plant zucchinis and gourds. Okay? Now, or pumpkins. So, you basically have, some people say there's no end. It is. It's the same time as the rains. It's the time when people start planting, which is why we have to stop doing, because they're planting for the next season. Rabbi Shimon Omer, but, this, but then we add on this extra thing, which is Rabbi Shimon says, in If you're going to be very specific about when you plant and when it's good for your fruits or all that, it's going to be a very... Unclear. The rabbis don't like things to be unclear. Oh, for you it's one thing. For you it's for you it's a different time. Everyone has a different time. It makes it very confusing for a halachic system. He said, we're just going to give it a very clear date. Okay, the rains generally stop around Pesach, so Pesach is the date for the for the wheat fields, and Shavuot is the date for the the trees. Okay, a field of trees. Okay, so that's what we basically have. So that's our Tosefet, which starts super early, as you notice. The Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, these are Amoraim, Mishum Bar Kapara, who is a Tana. They said, Rabban Gamliel ubeiti no nimnu al shnei prakim halalu ubitlum. Came Rabban Gamliel, and he canceled this whole thing. He said, no, we're not going to start Tosefet then. No. Okay, it sounds like we're not going to have Tosefet at all. To which... We have a big question about this. Either Rabbi Zera said to Rabbi Yavau, or Rish Lakish said to Rabbi Yochanan. Either way, this question was asked. How could they possibly cancel a, a, a rule that Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel instituted? You can't just do that. It says in the Mishnah. One baiting can't come along and cancel something else another baiting instituted unless they're greater in intelligence and in minyan, in numbers. Now, the baiting of Rabban Gamliel was not greater than the baiting of Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, and therefore they have no rights to go canceling what Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel instituted. So this doesn't make any sense. To which they answer, well, right now we'll see, when whoever was asked the question, he was silent for a moment. This is a quote from Daniel, okay, also where he was silent for a moment, okay? Didn't have a good answer. But then Amrale said to him, wait, Imor, you'll have to say, Kachi tenu benehem. Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel made a stipulation when they did this, and they said, Kol arotzel levatel yavo v'yavatel. When they instituted Tosef Shvi'it, they said, anyone who wants to come and cancel it is allowed to cancel it. So now they say, wait a minute. This doesn't make any sense. Did who, who he? Was it theirs to basically say we can get rid of this halacha? They made it up. Halacha l'moshe misinai. This is a halacha l'moshe misinai. What's halacha l'moshe misinai? It means a very old halacha that was passed down from Moshe at Sinai, whether it was literally passed down or just we have a very old tradition about it. It stands somewhere in between. We have things that are forbidden by rabbinic law and things that are forbidden by Torah law. The Torah law is always stronger. That's what we were just talking about earlier. And this is in between. Okay? It's right in between. It's stronger than a Dorabanan, but weaker than a Doraita, right? Stronger than Rabbinic, weaker than Torah law. To, now, how do we know it's Halacha Lamosh Misina? In which case, Beit Shemai and Beit Hillel don't have the rights to just get rid of it. Well, we see from here. Ta'ama Rabbi Asi, Ama Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Nechun Yish Bik'at Beit Chortan. Okay, he said in his name. We've seen this a bunch of times already in the Gemara. We definitely saw it in Sukkah and some other places as well. Eser nitiot, arava v'nisuch hamayim, you'll see what we saw in sukkah, because two of these halachas have to do with sukkahs, are halacha l'moshe misina. These three things were passed down from Moshe at Sinai. Let's talk about the last two, they're easy to explain. Arava is they would surround the Mizbeach with the altar in the temple with aravot, every day, of, or many of the days of Sukkot. And nisuch hamayim is they would pour the water libations, also on the days of Sukkot. Eser nitiot is this law that if you have a field, that has 10 new saplings, okay, within a space of 50 by 50 cubits, which is called a Beit Se'ah, then you're allowed to plow that field all the way until Rosh Hashanah. But 
What's implied from this? And that's Halach Lamosh Misinai, you're allowed to do that. It's implied that Halach Lamosh Misinai, though, if it's an old field, and they're not saplings, but they're older trees, and it's within the size, you can't plow them before Shemitah year, because there's Tosefet Shvi'it. So there you see, this isn't something Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai made up, the Rabban Gamliel, that since they stipulated, anyone who wants to can come get rid of it, that's why Rabban Gamliel got rid of it, that makes no sense. It's Halach Lamosh Misinai, it can't be gotten rid of. So what do they answer? Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Ki Gemirei Hilchatash Loshim Yom Lefnei Rosh Hashanah. Now we're going to learn that there were stages. Halach Lamosh Misinai, 30 days before you can't do anything. Not four months before, five months before, six months before, right? Pesach was almost six months before Rosh Hashanah, five and a half. So he says like this, the Halach Lamosh Misinai was 30 days before. Va'atu hame tiku mi Pesach umeyatzeret came Beit Shammai Beit Hillel and said, oh, well, we're going to start even earlier because we feel like this is serving the upcoming year. Va'at nu b'ditu, but they made a stipulation, the kolorot selavatel yavovivatel. Why? They understood. It's hard enough for people not to work the land in the Shemitah year. Now we're adding more and it might come a time where it's just too difficult for people to keep this. So they stipulated if they want to and that's what Rabban Gamliel got rid of. He didn't get rid of Tosefet in general. He got rid of this extra Tosefet. Okay. And that's what we mean, right? And this is what we're talking about. Well, we'll get to the, the Do'oraita part, okay? We'll get back. Remember, this was all to try to explain the statement of Rav Dimi, Yachol Yilkel Tosefet. You might have thought you get lashes for Tosefet. And Nasev Latamud Torah. We're going to get back to really understanding this fully tomorrow. But now let's just finish up. We have one other question, right? Now we're assuming Tosefet is Halachal Mosh Musina, and we derive that from this Etzer Nitiyot. But now the Gemara says, wait a minute. Hami Hilchataninu, Krayninu. Comes from a verse, Ditnan, as we said, and this is where we said before, and this is where we're going to get to. It's do right, and if it's do right, you might have thought you get lashes. Rabbi Ditnan b'charishu b'katzir tishpot. How do we understand this verse? We're going to look at Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yishmael. We're only going to see Rabbi Yishmael's interpretation tomorrow, but we'll start with Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva Omer, ain't sarich l'mar charish b'katzir shal shviit shekvar ne'amar said chalot izra v'kamar chalot izmo. This is what I said earlier. Once we assume it's time about shmita. But we don't need it for Shemitah because we already know you can't plant and you can't do anything like that. So you don't need to say, It means you can't do Harisha before the year starts because that's preparing for next year. And you can't cut the month after, right? 30 days after because you might, right? It doesn't say 30 days here, but they're basically saying, a little before and a little after you can't cut because that's still connected to the previous year and that's your Tosefet. So from here we see that it's not, and we're in the middle of a question here, we're going to have to end in a question, which is how can you say that it's Halach Lamosh Misinai if it actually is learned directly from the Torah? So we'll finish this up in next week's, in uh, tomorrow's class. So have a Shabbat Shalom or Shavuot Tov everyone.